Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the second part of getting your environment set up. And uh, in the last lesson, we, we got Python 3.43 uh, set up and working, and we showed you at the command prompt how you could actually run some basic code and just do some multiplication and print out a line and stuff. So in this lesson, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna get our editor working. So we're gonna use Sublime Text and you can use lots of different other tools. There's IDEs and many other different things, some that just you install and it just works right away. But we're gonna use Sublime because in other parts of the programming tutorial, uh, in other parts of the overall tutorial, I'm gonna to wanna to use different languages. And Sublime allows us to kind of switch languages a lot better than something like PyCharm or something else might be, which is really just Python specific. Okay. Also, Sublime Text is very simple, it's very quick to get up and running, and a, there's a lot of add-ons for it that can help you be very productive as a programmer. Okay, So in order to download this, go to sublimetext.com and click on Download, and you're going to be given in these options here. Now, there's one drawback to, Py, uh, to Sublime, and that's that it is a paid-for program, but the the evaluation period is unlimited, okay? Meaning you can evaluate it forever, but if you wanna keep using it, you really should buy it at some point if you like it a lot, okay? So the version I'm running right now is the evaluation version. Uh, to show you guys what it's like, it's actually no different from the real version. It works just fine. Just every once in a while, it'll pop up and ask you if you would like to buy the full version, and that's it. So you just click cancel and you can go on. All right, so download your appropriate version, OS X or Windows or anything you need. Uh, you can also get a portable version, which puts everything inside one folder. Okay. Now, once you've, you've downloaded it, uh, go ahead and uh, click it, open it up, and you're going to see something that looks like this. Okay. Well, you won't see these files up here. You're going to see absolutely nothing up here. Uh, maybe an untitled window, say untitled right here. I've put this code in, both of these files are something that I went ahead and, and created uh, just to give you a, a demonstration. Okay, so this first one, this is uh, hello, hello World down here, Prince Hello World at the bottom. Uh, you notice before it had some uh, Chinese characters actually. Uh, that's because uh, part of the demo I'm going to show you is how to set up Sublime for use with non-Chinese characters. And I'll show you what it does if the, or non-English characters, sorry. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get some basics work in here. So if you want to create a Python file, you just go file, new, and then save it with this dot py at the end. Okay, so every file you should save for Python, save it as dot py. That way Sublime knows that it's a Python file. If you don't save it with .py, you won't get this nice uh, colored uh, formatting here. So if I did something like this, and I tried to type, you know, hello world in here, well, this file has, it doesn't know that it's a Python file. So you'll notice the, there's a big difference here. Okay, so I'm not gonna save that. Now there's two things that you have to do to let Sublime know that well, to kind of fit Sublime to your Python needs. And the first thing is the settings. So you have a lot of different stuff up here. Uh, we're not gonna be too concerned with most of it for right now. Uh, things like edit, selection, find, and these are all related to kind of how you move through your code and how you do different things in the code. Uh, this uh, view, this will change kind of the layout here. Uh, you might have noticed in an earlier uh, an earlier tutorial I had this file window open here. So you can open that or you can hide that. Uh, what we're gonna look at right now is under preferences. And first thing I want you to look at is your default settings. So if I open up default settings, you see this big file, and there's a lot of stuff in here. These gray lines, these are comments. They're not, they're not anything that uh, are actually creating settings. Each one of these other lines is some sort of setting. So right now I'm using this uh, default color scheme. My font size is 10. 
and other things like I don't know I'm not using spell check is false my tab size is four and I'm translating tabs to spaces false things like that okay auto indent all that other stuff so this right here this line translate tabs to spaces tab size four these are actually things we want when we're using uh, Python. Well, we don't want this to be false, we want this to be true, uh, but tab size four is fine, you can change it however you want. But the thing is, is uh, changing it in here, you, know, you can't really change it in here, these are the kind of default base uh, settings, but you can override them, meaning you can put them in your personal settings, under your user settings, and then it'll go ahead and uh, change it for you, okay? So what I have done here is I've gone ahead and in my personal settings, you notice if I change the font size, it will change this in here for me. So in here, I've written a couple different things. You don't need to write this line. You can actually take that line out. And if I take that line out, it will shrink the text. If I do this, you notice it puts that line right back in. So I'm going to enlarge it back to 14 so you can see it better. You don't need to know what these do. The only thing you need to know is that when you're dealing with Python, if you're not changing your tabs to spaces and you're not setting good tab, you're not using good tabs uh, sizes or good formatting, your Python program is going to have a problem. And we'll talk a lot more about this later on when we're dealing with uh, actually programming in Python. Uh, we'll talk about why you need to indent and why this is important. But for right now, you just need to know that under Preferences, Settings User, you should put everything that's in here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in the YouTube comments. So you can just cut and paste it out into here if you'd like. And then when you're done, go to File, Save, or you can hit Control S to save. All right, so I'm going to close that and come back here. So once you've done your, your settings, then we need to connect Python to Sublime. So remember, we installed Python into the directory, I believe, in Windows. You should have installed it to this. Uh, wherever it is on a, on a Mac, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you will, I will put a link in my thing on how to set up Python uh, for the Mac, where to, where to put everything as far as the directory directories go. But uh, for a Windows system, you're going to put Python 3.4 right here. And then you're going to go to Tools and Build System. So the Build System is the settings for when you're using a different programming language. So each of these is a programming language. And we're going to use the Python 3.4 in order to do it. Notice I have Python here and Python 3.4. Under Python 3.4, I, I have, oops, sorry, I've done this. Now this looks pretty confusing. Honestly, I just copied it off the internet. Uh, somebody else made this build file and I'm okay with that. Uh, but what I wanna do is I wanna go here, tools, build system, and do new, and you'll get a file that looks like this. And then you're gonna copy all of this into here and then save it as Python 3, 4, just like I have right there. Okay, so if you've saved it correctly, you will then under build systems, see the same thing here, Python 3, 4, and you'll be able to do that, click that and make sure it's checked. Then you can run Hello World. All right, so let's go back over that one more time just to make sure you got it. First thing, first thing you wanna do is your settings. So project, or for tools, Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, preferences, settings, user. Use all this stuff in here in your settings. Then under tools, build system, new build system, and then copy and paste this in here. So what does this stuff actually do? Uh, well, this line right here is going to set our encoding to UTF-8. I'm going to talk about why that's important in just a minute. Uh, this is the line that says uh, this is where your Python program is. And remember, we actually looked at that in the, the directory when in the command prompt, we looked at this. And then this says, well, take the file and then run it. And this is a regex, which is uh, parsing out the file name, and then your selector for 
source Python. So all this stuff here, I, I don't really know, uh, you know how to put this together myself. I have to look it up on the internet and that's okay. I just, as I said, I copied this. The only line I put in here that's a little different than a build system is this. And I'm putting this in here because I have a feeling that a lot of people that are gonna watch this video, especially since I work in, in Asia, a lot of people are gonna want to use uh, either, you know, some other characters, non-English characters in here. So if I took this line out of my build system and I'm just gonna take it out and then, you know, file save, control S, and I come over here and I write uh, hello in Chinese and I try to run this program I'm gonna get this error and it says Unicode error can't encode characters in the position which what it's saying is it doesn't know what these characters are because the file isn't encoded to use Chinese characters so I need to fix that by putting this line in here and that sets the encoding to something called UTF-8. This is a huge pain a lot of times for, for new programmers. If they have something you're using foreign characters or anything like that and the files just don't want to work because the compilers or whatever are not set up to use those characters or the editors not set up to use those characters. So you have to change your encoding, encoding to UTF-8. Encoding is the style by which the file is being saved. So over here, I've got uh, print and I've got my characters now and I've changed this and I've saved it. Now if I run this, it will print out hello. Okay. So works just fine. And if I take this out again, this will not work. So if, as long as you have UTF-8, you should be able to use pretty much any character set. You won't have a problem uh, using you know, uh, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Greek, Russian, whatever you want. Uh, if you don't have the encoding, you'll have some difficulties. Okay? All right, so this is Sublime Text, and this is what we're going to be using. This is what I'm going to be using for the entire series. I'll be using almost Sublime Text the entire time. I might have some extra videos on, on using like PyCharm or some other editors, but I prefer Sublime, and that's what I'll be using. If you want to use something else, feel free. Okay, uh, in the next video, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with some actual coding. I'm also going to put an optional video on, in this section if you want to watch that. It's going to show a couple other editors that you might be interested in using. I'm just going to kind of briefly run down uh, who, they're, who they're made by and kind of the benefits or the, the negatives of using those. Okay, so feel free to watch the optional video. If not, skip over and we're going to get programming. All right, uh, see you next time.